I'm Kirsten Wise, the Extension Specialist for Field Crop Diseases at Purdue University, and I'm here with Charlie Wolaschuk, who's our Extension Ear Rot and Mycotoxin Specialist. And we're out in Indiana Cornfield as we prepare for harvest to answer some questions about ear rots. It's been a very hot, dry year in Indiana, and that's caused a lot of concern about one particular ear rot, Aspergillus ear rot. And what we're here today is to talk about the differences between Aspergillus ear rot and some of the other ear rots that have similar symptoms. The one in particular that we're interested in today is Aspergillus ear rot. Uh, when you pull back the husk, you'll see a, a kind of a olive colored green spores being produced. And the other type of mold that you can find on, uh, on ears, and you see them quite common that you might mistake for Aspergillus ear rot is either penicillin ear rot, which can be anywhere from gray to um, to bluish gray and green. And here's an example on the same ear we have uh, a kind of grayish blue color mold which is probably a penicillin uh, which is not aspergillus and would not be associated with with uh, aflatoxin production. So. And also the aspergillus era has more of a dusty type of spore. Usually it'll be usually... Yeah, let me just show you here. Us. If you touch it like this you okay. see Yes, aflatoxin, which is associated with this um, aspergillus ear rot, is a, a potent liver toxin. And if cattle are fed uh, this um, toxin, it, and it can get into the milk. It also can cause uh, death to chickens and cancer. And it's highly regulated, uh, meaning that um, uh, you can't sell your grain if if you have more than 20 parts per billion in the grain. So if you have this disease, there's highly likely that you'll have the toxin. There's been a lot of concern about the presence of Aspergillus era in Indiana, but we have not seen very high levels. Charlie, what have you seen? Yes, I, I've seen no reports of anyone finding uh, Aspergillus ear rot, uh, and I've been out in the fields down in southern Indiana and uh, eastern Indiana and have not seen uh, this ear rot. Now, just because we haven't been hearing reports of Aspergillus rot does not mean that it is not present. And this year, elevators and co-ops will be testing for the presence of the asp Aspergillus-related aflatoxin. And this is usually done by screening grain with a black light. You want to tell us more about the black light test? Yeah, what they'll, they'll do is they'll crack the corn and, and shine a black light, and they're looking for a blue-green-yellow fluorescence, and that that color would indicate that the mold has been growing on that grain. Doesn't indicate that there's uh, toxin present, but it'll be suspect that toxin is present and it'll probably be tested for it. If the fluorescence does begin to shine at the elevator, you can usually expect that there would be dockage or refusal involved at that point in time. So it is important to know if you do have the, the mold present before harvest so you can segregate that grain and harvest those fields early. If if there is mold problems with ear rots, then the grain should be harvested as early as possible and dried to down into storage conditions as quick as possible. Uh, down below 14, 14 and a half percent, and if possible, to segregate it, sell it, or, or uh, keep it keep it cool. We have not seen a lot of Aspergillus ear rot in Indiana this year, but it is important to know if ear rots are present in your field. If you are concerned that you have an ear rot problem or are unsure of what ear rot you might have, please remember you can send a sample into our Purdue Plant and Pest Diagnostic Lab or contact one of us, our, your extension specialists, to help you make a diagnosis. Yeah, and just one last thing I'd say is that it's best to make your diagnosis before harvest instead of after harvest because once the grain is shelled, it's difficult to tell what, what the disease is on it, on the grain.